Hey ladies, how you doing? I know it has been a very long time since I've recorded a vlog. Um, hope everyone has been doing well and I apologize. I also haven't really been on much watching too many videos. Um, but what I do want to do is uh, give you all a recap of what's been going on and uh, where I am in my journey now. So the first cycle that I went through was a fresh cycle and that was back in December, um, well November, and I went for my beta back in December and learned that um, it was a big fat negative. And so decided to take a pause from uh, our journey and uh, as I was taking a pause, I decided to actually go and get a second opinion, uh, which I am very glad that we did that. Uh, the first reproductive endocrinologist uh, basically told us at our follow-up visit that our options were that of adoption or donor eggs. And um, yeah, not very hopeful whatsoever. So sought a second opinion and very glad that we did. There were some tests that the first RE didn't even do. So I didn't even know what an AMH level was or you know that that was a test that needed to be done. Um, but the new RE did that and my AMH number is 2.7, which um, is actually really good so that lets the doctor know that I have a lot of eggs. Um, the other thing that hadn't happened previously that my husband was actually encouraging the other RE to do and really was trying to understand why the, um, the doctor wouldn't recommend it but was a laparoscopy and so um, even after the fell fresh cycle and we didn't have any that went to freeze, even after that, um, he didn't even say that it would be worth doing a diagnostic laparoscopy to see if the block tube was the reason that um, the cycle failed. So the new RE, uh, she recommended that I have that done. So I had that done January 15th. And um, previously, my HC, HSG excuse me, had shown that my left tube was blocked. And so the diagnostic lat was done, dye test was done as a part of that procedure, and my left tube was not blocked. Um, so <clears throat> the doctor explained that, uh, you know, the fluids are always going to take the path of least resistance. And so, um, like I said, both tubes open. And the only thing that was found by um, my OBGYN, he was the surgeon who did the lap, was um, just some, some spots of mild endometriosis that was treated and removed. And my, one of my ovaries, uh, I can't, I just right now, I can't recall if it was the right or the left. I think it was the right. One of my ovaries had like attached itself um, to my body inside and so he just gently went in and um, removed it from touching or being connected or attached so that it was free-flowing like it should be and so this the uh, diagnostic laparoscopy was a success had my follow-up with the RE and she pretty much said that um, there really is no reason why we can't conceive naturally um, however just with uh, my age that you know there's always that 50 50 percent chance that when an egg is released and fertilized it could be abnormal so she just thinks that our previous miscarriages you know the odds were that that those eggs were abnormal so she did give a recommendation that if we were to move forward with IVF that she would recommend that we do the PGS um, testing, which is the pre, I think is pre, I can't remember, genetic testing, pre something genetic testing, I can't, preconception, I don't know, something like that, can't remember. Anyway, um, to do that so that once the, um, 
once ICSI is done and the egg is fertilized, they take a little biopsy of the embryo and send that off to the lab um, on the, the eggs or embryos. And then the lab lets us know which ones are normal and which ones are abnormal. So then we're able to transfer uh, a normal embryo back in. And so with that, it actually turns out to be a frozen transfer um, instead of doing a fresh cycle. Because another thing that was a concern with the fresh cycle is that my estrogen levels were really high. They were like 3,000, which it's my understanding that in order for implantation to take place, your estrogen levels ideally need to be about 150 or so. Uh, however, after talking it through more clearly with the um, with the second opinion, our current RE, she explained to us that for a fresh cycle with all of the stimulants and injections and hormones that you're on, your estrogen levels are going to be that high. And so uh, with that, it's pretty much they put them back in and cross fingers and it's like, oh, well, you know, we kind of hope and pray that everything goes well. So I'm hoping that um, by us, and, and so if I haven't said it, we are we have decided that we are going to do another cycle uh, and we are going to do the PGS testing. Um, and so I'm hoping that by doing that, we are going to increase our chances to um, get a big fat positive. Uh, so in the interim, after the consultation, I did start acupuncture. So I've been doing that since the latter part of December. Uh, the new RE, she has put both my husband and I on prenatal vitamins. As, as well as a CoQ10 um, supplement. And so we are praying that, you know, the acupuncture, these, um, and I don't, I can't think of the name. I'll have to probably just add it when I edit this video. The name of the um, supplements that we're on. I can't remember it off the top of my head. Uh, so it's just basically three tablets and it cuts down on all the multiple multiple I mean unbelievable amount of supplements that I was taking I felt like I was rattling around in my belly when I walked um, just the different pills that I was taking so I'm glad to be down to just three now uh, so we're on schedule to let's see so I'm waiting for my next cycle so it hopefully will come next week at the end of February or the beginning of March. And so with that period, I would call start birth control, um, have a trial transfer on March 9th, which my previous RE didn't even do trial transfers. Um, so the trial transfer and saline sonogram are March 9th. And then the consultation with the nurse is night. March 10th, the day after, um, where we get the med outline and and every the calendar, etc. So with just that as a rough estimate, we would be looking at a April 2nd retrieval date, and then six weeks after that would be the frozen transfer back in. So that right now is like a tentative rough timeline. Obviously, everything is going to be contingent upon when um, my cycle starts this month and um, there's also the possibility that maybe it could happen naturally so I don't know <laughs> um, so we'll see the end of next week I might be taking a home pregnancy test to see if it happened the natural way or I might be calling to start birth control pills so we'll see I just put it in God's hands and pray on it and leave it up to him. Um, let me just see if I, I had to take some notes because there's just so much. Oh, I did pretty good. So just a few um, videos that I did get a chance to peek at a little bit, um, but I really haven't been on, so I apologize. 
Um, I'm glad to see that Latrice, you are doing another cycle and you got your meds. My goodness, <laughs> you have quite the um, Rubbermaid container there of meds. So I do wish you the best. Uh, I truly believe 2015 is going to be our year. Uh, don't worry, you're young. I'm glad that you are also seeking a second opinion. That's what we have to do sometimes. If we're not happy and comfortable with our doctor um, and their treatment plan, then seek that second opinion because I truly am just leaps and bounds uh, hopeful. I just I have that restored hope uh, that the other doctor just made me lose and I felt deflated and like I just wanted to give up. But this new doctor, she really has restored that hope. So I hope that you find another clinic and another doctor to do that for you as well. And then Holly, uh, glad to see that you are doing cycle number two as well. And I wish you the best with that. Uh, I do want to say congratulations. Congratulations. Sorry, I can't talk here. To Jen T. Uh, I saw your 16 weeks um, video. So congrats. Uh, Shandy, 21 weeks with, uh, with your twins. So congratulations there. And then our IFV, I, I cannot talk, my gosh, our IVF journey, Shay Hunt on your new BFP. Congratulations. Um, I truly do want to send out, um, heartfelt condolences to LaQuisha. I, I'm so sorry to hear about the loss of your twins, Lindsay and London. I am just, my heart goes out to you. Hang in there. Um, continue to have faith. I, I know it was, um, and it still is, very difficult to go through a loss. And um, your faith is probably being tested. But um, stay strong and um, continue to have faith in God. Uh, and then lastly, I do want to um, say thank you for all of the support that I've received from God's promise to Ma. Uh, I know you don't have any videos recorded out here on YouTube, but that you are a dedicated supporter and watcher of our IVF journey. So thank you for your support. And then I just want to thank all of uh, my subscribers. Again, I apologize that I've been missing in action for a while, but I truly have just been evaluating, um, you know, that first cycle and trying to determine if we were going to move forward with the second cycle. So thank you for um, all of your support. Uh, if you're new, I do wish you well on your journey. And uh, thanks to all my new subscribers, which I probably don't have any because I haven't recorded anything lately. But to everyone else whose videos that I will get caught up on, you know, congratulations to all the new births. I think Robin, you had your baby. Um, oh my gosh. I know there are others. I So just congratulations on all the new recent births, all the new recent big fat positives, and to all the BFNs, please keep your head up and stay in there. 2015 is going to be our time. All right, so that's it for now. I will record... I would think at the end of this month, early March, just to give you all an update as to where things are after I have my mock transfer and the consultation with the nurse, I'll have more information by early March. So until then, be well and take care. God bless. Peace.